stories powerfully recorded on videotape. We start with Whitney Casey's report on the high school hazing incident in the suburbs of Chicago. And you can decide yourself whether what you see on tape is actually worse. That's what some of our upcoming guests will say. Buckets were flying, hands were flying, people were bleeding, girls were unconscious. A girl got a bucket put on her head. Students at this suburban Chicago high school describe the weekend's melee. Caught on tape, the aftermath of a powder puff football game. A tradition, junior girls versus senior girls. Except this year, the hazing got way out of hand. Sending five girls to the hospital and injuring many more. Well, this is from a paint can being thrown at me and Tabasco sauce and vinegar and stuff like that in my eye and just spam on my face and fish guts, pig ears. There's pig intestine wrapped around my neck. Dr. Michael Riggle, the school principal, says with the help of school deans, authorities have identified 50 of the girls on the tape. Criminal charges are pending. Dr. Riggle says alcohol was an escalating factor in the fracas and another factor. And there were some similar actions that happened the year before, but nothing that we really were knowledgeable of. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, the girls had that done to them that year. And now this year, they've looked at that and said, you know, this is something that I've got anger about and I want to do the same thing to someone else. Some 200 people attended the off-campus game. Witnesses say buckets of animal and human waste were used in the hazing along with paint thinner, blood and spoiled food. Obviously I'm angry that this happened. I'm disgusted. I'm appalled 100 percent. I'm embarrassed to say that I go to Glenbrook North High School because of this. It's disgusting. Now, while some remain outraged, others underscore that this incident should not sully the school's academic achievements, achievements that 97% of the student body that will be graduating will go on to college. And out of the 2,100 here in the student body, only 250 actually attended the Powder Puff game. However, the principal did point out to us that many of those seniors he saw there in the hazing were also, A, accomplished students here, Paula. A students that may face criminal charges as late as Friday. Paula? Whitney Casey, thanks for the update. Uh, we now go to two young men who were actually witnesses to this hazing incident, Nick Babb and Kevin House. They are both standing outside Glenbrook North High School. Good of you to join us. Thanks so much for dropping by tonight. Nick, I want to start with you. Describe to us what you saw when the violence started. Well, it all began with just a bunch of, you know, stuff like paint being thrown onto the girls. But then the violence started, and I kind of walked away because I didn't really want to be a part of it. And, I mean, it was all a part of the whole powder puff tradition, so I didn't really think much of it. But then when I realized that people were actually getting hurt and, like, people were getting injured and I saw the girl who had the 15 stitches or the 10 stitches in her head I saw her walking out I knew that this was becoming something that was wrong and I don't know I just it was shocking pretty much I, I was surprised Kevin so. if you would elaborate for us at what point you became concerned you talk you know Bab just talked about this excuse me Nick just talked about this being an annual uh, right but uh, something was very different this year yeah, um, when I went to it, I didn't think that it was going to escalate into the you know, violent brawl that it did. Um, you know, this is something that happens every year, uh, and it's a humiliation thing, it's a hazing thing, but it's never really been a violence thing. And, uh, you know, at first it was sort of fun, and it was sort of expected, it was sort of a consensual thing between the juniors and seniors. The juniors are doing it so they can do it next year, but... The second that, uh, you know, fists started getting thrown, buckets, kicking, you know, I just walked away. I just, you know, I couldn't stand watching it any further. Yeah. Kevin, I, there I are a say. lot of people saying uh, that they saw some of these senior students drinking before this all happened. What role do you think alcohol played in all of this? Um, you know, I think alcohol did play a, a fairly big role in what happened but um, it would have happened if there was drinking there or not I don't know if you could say it would have escalated to the point it did if there was not drinking there but uh, you know it did play a role in probably you know some of the judgment the uh, some of the girls made you know it might have clouded that I believe 
Yes. Nick, why didn't someone call 911 earlier than they did? Well, because the whole the whole point of Powder Puff wasn't to get anyone in trouble or it wasn't to... And uh, the injuries at the time didn't really seem so serious that a 911 call needed to be called. And I mean, a lot of the people there didn't want anyone to get in trouble, but I guess when things got way too out of hand and people started going to the hospital, that's when that's when the poop hit the fan, I'd like to say. And one thing I just want to want people to keep in mind that it wasn't all the seniors who were punching and kicking. It was it was just a few, and like a few people who had personal grudges against the junior girls that had to took it personally and had to beat them up, so to speak. So. Well, Kevin, let me ask you this. It was a disturbing report that came out of, of your school today that some of these young women actually paid to be hazed. What's that all about, and is that true? Yeah, uh, it's true. They paid, th I mean, each junior girl pitched in for jerseys and for uh, beer for the, the event. They, they buy the seniors uh, it, so... I mean, they, they pay to, they, they know what they were getting into to an extent, to an extent. Yes. Uh, but, I mean, when it got, they didn't pay for stitches, they didn't pay for, you know, broken bones. They paid to humiliation so they could humiliate next year. That's the whole idea of it. Nick, how embarrassing is this, do you think, to your school? Um, I think, I really think that um, people are just uh, blowing it all out of proportion and people are just, I don't know, they're, they're acting way too embarrassed. I mean, it's really not a school issue. Like, it is, but it shouldn't be because these girls and these everyone who was there, including us two, even though we go to this school, we were there to have, like, a good time. And it was just, I mean, the school's embarrassed, but they shouldn't be because, I mean, like, people are just overreacting. And I don't know what else, else to say. I mean... All people right. should know that this kind of thing isn't the school's problem, you know, but it is kind of. But I, well, I guess it is now. Well, Nick Babb and Kevin House, thank you very much for both joining us tonight. And uh, we wish your school some luck as it tries to uh, clean up this.